They're just insulting our intelligence at this point. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. Americans. Healthcare, please. U.S. government. Sorry, did you say billions of dollars for ethnic cleansing in the Middle East? Americans. No, health care. U.S. government. All right, you drive a hard bargain, but here's billions of dollars for ethnic cleansing in the Middle East. Here's a tip. The side that keeps having to come up with justifications and explanations for why it's fine and normal for them to be killing thousands of children and perpetrating ethnic cleansing is probably not the side that's in the right. It's a tweet of a video by Loki. Israeli President Isaac Herzog seeks to justify his mass killing of Palestinian children by holding up the book Mein Kampf and claiming it was found in a children's living room. Tweet by Caitlin. They're just insulting our intelligence at this point. I used to think it was bad for Israel to be massacring children by the thousands and bombing hospitals and shooting quadriplegics and children in hospital beds, but then Israel's president waved an Arabic translation of Mein Kampf in front of a camera, so now I think it's all good. If Israel's position were based on truth and morality, it wouldn't be churning out a nonstop deluge of demonstrable lies. No one believes anything Israel says anymore. You either know Israel lies constantly, or you know it but pretend you don't. You know how narcissists will do the most fucked up shit, and if anyone calls them out, they act all wounded and victimized, like, oh, what, I'm the bad guy now? That's Israel and its supporters. Anyone who criticizes U.S.-sponsored military violence gets accused of supporting the other side by supporters of that military violence. If you opposed the Iraq invasion, you were a Saddam supporter. If you criticized U.S. proxy warfare in Ukraine, you were a Putin lover, etc. The argument is that criticizing the actions of the world's most powerful war machine means you support the side opposing that war machine. And because you're a treasonous monster who supports the other side, that means your criticisms should not be listened to. This happens with literally every single high-profile act of U.S. interventionism. Literally every single one, without a single solitary exception. What this means, in effect, is that all criticism of the world's most powerful war machine is considered unacceptable and gets stomped down. Those who are calling you a Hamas lover and a terrorist supporter today are telling you that nobody should ever criticize any U.S.-sponsored act of military aggression because they're using the exact same tactic that is literally always used to stomp out all U.S.-sponsored acts of military aggression. What they are really saying when they call you a Hamas supporter is, shut up, be silent, never criticize U.S. warmongering, never criticize the most consequential actions of the most powerful and destructive government on this planet under any circumstances. Shut up, be silent, obey. It's not okay for grown adults to believe Israel is liberating the people of Gaza. The correct response to learning that Hamas has significant support in Gaza is not, oh, well, exterminate everyone in Gaza then. It's, wow, how hellish must Israel have made life in Gaza for that to be the case. It's true that a Republican president would be as bad as Biden on Israel-Palestine. But the correct response to that isn't, oh, well, I'll vote Democrat then. It's, if we're not allowed to vote on whether our government murders children, that means the entire system needs to go. What's wild is that this right now is the best the West will ever look regarding this Gaza issue. Public approval of a depraved Western military action is always highest at the beginning, And then as time goes on, people start to realize that they were lied to and information starts coming out proving the whole thing was a sham. We've seen it over and over again, from Vietnam to Iraq to Afghanistan to Libya. Already people are starting to realize the proxy war in Ukraine was a terrible idea, and in a few years no serious person will dispute this. But this time, the Western-backed destruction of Gaza is facing massive public disapproval when it's just over a month old. As more and more information comes out and more and more Westerners become aware of what exactly their government supported in Gaza, it's going to get much, much worse. That's why you're seeing billionaires freak out, 
and getting together to set up narrative management operations to try and manipulate public perception. They know they're losing control of the narrative, and losing it much, much earlier than they should be. But there's only so many ways you can spin the murder of thousands of children. The old propaganda methods just aren't working the way they usually do. Eyes are starting to open. People are starting to get angry. And the powers that rule over us are starting to get very, very nervous.